Hi guys, this is Rahul from Simply Learn and today we are going to be talking about 10 of the highest paying jobs in 2019. Now without further ado, let's jump right into it. At number 10, we have Project Manager. A Project Manager is someone who is in charge of the overall planning as well as execution of a particular project. A project manager's salary usually starts at around 91,000 US dollars. For a senior project manager, this can go up to 112,000 US dollars. Now, let's have a look at some of the skills required to become a project manager. Firstly, you'll need a strong understanding of the strategic as well as operational areas within project management. You'll need to know about leading edge technologies in the domain. You'll need to be an expert with each and every aspect of project management from its initial stages all the way to its completion. And you need to have experience when it comes to handling large scale as well as cross divisional projects. The process of becoming a project manager is also made immensely easy when you have certifications such as the PMP or the Project Management Professional Certification, the Prince2 Foundation and Practitioner Certification or the Certified Scrum Master Certification. Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a project manager. Firstly, you're in charge of planning, executing and closing projects. You'll need to handle teams and make sure that there's commitment and productivity. You'll need to be able to manage expectations by making sure that the projects align with your business goals and you'll need to be able to communicate the project status, the milestones you've hit and the difficulties you're facing to the stakeholders. Now let's have a look at some of the companies that regularly hire project managers which is just about every company in the world. There's Dell, VMware, HP, SAP, Boeing, EY, Adobe and so much more. Now let's have a look at number 9. Full Stack Developer A full stack developer works on both the front end as well as the back end portions of an application. They earn approximately 93,000 US dollars per annum. A full stack developer has to have the following skills. They need to be well versed in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node or React or any Angular framework. They'll need to know about one general purpose programming language, be it Ruby, Python, PHP, C Sharp, C++ and so on. They need to know about one relational database system, be it Postgres, MySQL, Oracle DB, etc. One web server like Nginx or Apache. They need to know about one deployment operating system, be it Windows, Ubuntu, CentOS, FreeBSD and so on. And have to have a clear understanding of one version control system like Git, SVN, Mercurial or any of the others. Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a full stack developer. Firstly, they're in charge of designing as well as developing a front end UI. They'll also have to do the server side coding. They'll need to integrate the front end as well as the back end into the full stack. And they need to ensure that they lead the project and work on it in such a way that a good product is delivered to the users. Now some of the companies that regularly hire full stack developers are IBM, Capital One, Verizon, Microsoft, Splunk, Wigpro, PayPal and so much more. At number 8, we have Software Engineer. A software engineer is one of the most well-known jobs in the IT industry. A software engineer develops various applications that enable users to accomplish tasks on their personal computers and electronic devices. They earn approximately 115,000 US dollars per annum. Now, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, software developer jobs are expected to grow 17% from 2014 till 2024. Now, let's have a look at some of the skills required for the role of a software engineer. Firstly, you'll need a degree in software engineering, computer science or any other technical field. You'll need to understand as well as master programming languages. You'll need to know about the different processes that are involved in software engineering and you'll need to have logical as well as structured thinking. Now, if you're confused about what programming language that you want to learn next, I suggest you click on the top right corner and watch our video on the top 10 programming languages of 2019. Now, let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a software engineer. Firstly, you'll need to analyze the requirements of the users with respect to a certain software. You'll have to create the software components and make sure they function properly. You'll need to work with different teams and oversee deployment as well as maintenance. And you'll need to create instructional material that will enable users to use the existing software. Now, let's have a look at some of the companies that regularly hire software engineers, which is again just about every company in the world. There's Amazon, Samsung, JP Morgan, Microsoft, Qualcomm, Yelp, Adobe, 
Tata Consultancy Services and so on. Now let's have a look at number 7. Cloud Solutions Architect The job of a Cloud Solutions Architect is one of the hottest ones in the industry. They plan and design cloud environments and provide guidance throughout the life of a development or deployment project. They earn approximately 126,000 US dollars per annum. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required to become a Cloud Solutions Architect. You need to have a good understanding of the various cloud solutions that are provided by famous cloud service providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. You need to have hands-on experience when it comes to designing available, cost-efficient and fault-tolerant systems on the cloud. You will need to have a whole lot of practical knowledge when it comes to using services within domains like compute, networking, storage and database. And you will need to be an expert in deploying and maintaining cloud solutions. Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a cloud solutions architect. Firstly, you will need to work to deploy your application on the cloud architecture. You will need to be able to migrate a company's physical infrastructure onto the cloud. You will have to focus on non-functional requirements such as usability, scalability reliability and performance and you need to make sure that you are able to minimize risks for the organization such as security leaks, calculation errors and application downtime. Now let's have a look at some of the companies that regularly hire cloud solutions architects. We have IBM, VMware, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, American Express, EA and so on. That being said, the role of a cloud solutions architect isn't the only one you can find in the cloud domain. There's plenty of others to choose from, a sysops administrator, a devops engineer or a cloud developer. At number 6, we have IoT Solutions Architect. An IoT Solutions Architect's job is to do whatever it takes to build an end-to-end -end IoT solution that solves real business problems. They earn approximately 126,000 US dollars per annum. Now this isn't very surprising since the International Data Corporation predicts that the worldwide Internet of Things ecosystem and its trends will continue to see broad interest and momentum with an expected market size of $1.5 trillion in 2020. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required by an IoT Solutions Architect. Firstly, you'll need to clearly understand the particular problem that IoT is solving. You'll need to be an expert in at least one programming language like Python, Java, JavaScript or C++. You'll need to know about applications of IoT especially made possible through edge devices and sensors. You need to have experience working with miniature computers such as Raspberry Pi and particle photons. And finally, you'll need to have good user interface creation skills. Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of an IoT solutions architect. Firstly, you're responsible for planning as well as building an end-to-end -end IoT solution that solves real-life business problems. Then you'll need to engage in continuous learning about IoT businesses and its data governance. You'll need to help the organization solve various business problems by building discrete IoT solutions. And you'll need to set up as well as communicate the overall IoT vision, the message and the architecture to all of the stakeholders. Now some of the companies that regularly hire IoT solutions architects are Amazon, Oracle, Nokia, Hitachi, Walmart, Skyworks, Accenture, Mathworks and so on. Now let's have a look at number 5. Data Warehouse Architect A data warehouse architect is responsible for designing data warehouse solutions and working with conventional data warehouse technologies to come up with plans that best support a business or an organization. They help in defining strategy, implementing plans and delivering data warehousing. A data warehouse architect earns approximately 130,000 US dollars per annum. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required by a data warehouse architect. Firstly, you need to be familiar with data warehousing and the ETL methodology, which is the extract, transform and load methodology. You'll need to have an in-depth understanding of data system and applications and experience with client or server, web-based and server-side computing architectures. Another thing that would be greatly helpful are additional qualifications such as the Certified Data Management Professional Certification that can help make you a more valuable candidate in the job market. Next up, let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a data warehouse architect. Firstly, you'll need to translate business as well as data requirements into logical data models. Now, these data models need to adhere to defined data modeling standards as well as industry best practices. You'll need to develop organization-wide architectures and methodologies for software application design 
and development across multiple platforms. You'll need to understand and document the scope as well as business requirements by interacting and leading discussions with stakeholders. Now let's have a look at some of the companies that regularly hire data warehouse architects. There's Wells Fargo, Western Union, Amazon, Facebook, CGI, Deloitte, Accenture and so on. Next up we have number 4. Cyber Security Engineer A cyber security engineer protects information from theft, illegal duplication and unauthorized access. They deal with protecting information on computer networks, cloud servers, mobile devices and payment software just to name a few. A cybersecurity engineer earns approximately 131,000 US dollars per annum. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required by a cybersecurity engineer. Firstly, you need to be well versed in languages such as .NET, Java, Python and C Sharp. Then you also need to know web services like REST and SOAP. You'll need to understand how cloud service platforms like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud work and you need and you need to have experience in configuring as well as working with security tools such as firewalls, antivirus software, patch management systems and so on. You'll also need to know about operating systems such as Windows and Linux as well as a bit of virtualization. Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a cyber security engineer. Firstly, you'll need to plan, implement, manage, monitor and upgrade security measures for the protection of systems, networks and data. You'll need to monitor systems and networks to check for intrusions or security breaches. You'll need to regularly conduct network scans to identify weaknesses or vulnerabilities in the system. You'll need to develop automation scripts to manage and track incidents. And you'll need to supervise as well as provide feedback for changes in hardware, software and user needs. Now let's have a look at some of the companies that regularly hire cybersecurity engineer. Now this is one of those jobs that just about every company in the world will require. There's Fidelity Investments, Moody's, HP, Wipro, Boeing and so on. And now we're at number 3, Big Data Architect. A Big Data Architect is an expert when it comes to big data solutions such as Hadoop and Spark. They earn approximately 138,000 US dollars per annum. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required by a Big Data Architect. Firstly, you'll need in-depth experience in developing data engineering solutions on Hadoop and other related platforms. You need to understand the fundamentals of traditional Hadoop systems, Cloudera CDH and Hortonworks data platform. You need to have hands-on experience with Hadoop HDFS, Yarn, MapReduce, Scoop, Hive, Impala and Apache Spark and related technologies. You'll also knowledge about ETL or the Extract Transform Load methodology and SQL will be an added advantage. Now, if you are interested in taking up the job of a big data architect, you can look into certifications such as the CCA Spark and Hadoop Developer, which is provided by Cloudera, or the HTP Certified Developer in Big Data Hadoop by Hortonworks. Now, let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a big data architect. Firstly, you'll need to manage the full life cycle of big data solutions such as Hadoop and Apache Spark. You're responsible for structuring and analyzing the behavior of data. You need to be able to handle large-scale databases, analyze patterns of data and make strong as well as accurate business decisions. You'll need to analyze system bottlenecks, benchmark systems and propose solutions to eliminate them. You'll need to document use cases, solutions as well as recommendations. Now some of the companies that regularly hire big data architects, which is again a lot of companies in the world, there's Nvidia, Intuit, GoDaddy, JP Morgan, PayPal, HP and so many more. And now we're at the top two. At number two, we have data scientists. Data scientists are a new breed of analytical data experts. They have the technical skill to solve complex problems and the curiosity to explore what problems need to be solved. They not only understand what problems to solve, they also figure out what data is important, how to acquire the data, to clean the data and extrapolate information from this data. They can formulate a model or a theory communicate the results with the stakeholders and work with them to translate results into business actions. They earn approximately 140,000 US dollars per annum. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required by a data scientist. Firstly, you'll need to be able to design, develop and execute solutions to business problems. You need to be an expert when it comes to mathematical models, numerical analysis, statistics and hands-on experience with any programming language. You'll need to know how you can wrangle data and visualize the results and need to know the fundamentals of machine learning algorithms and how you can implement them. 
Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a data scientist. Firstly, you'll need to identify problems related to data analytics that offer opportunities for the organization. You'll need to collect large sets of data and analyze this data so that you can identify patterns, trends and insights. You'll need to apply data science methods such as machine learning and statistical modeling. You'll need to communicate these findings to stakeholders using visualization or other means. And you'll need to predict, forecast and drive data-driven business decisions. Now some of the companies that regularly hire data scientists are Google, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, Netflix, IBM, JP Morgan, GE Electronics, Uber and so on. Now here's an interesting fact about this role. Recent studies indicate that there are more roles available than there are skilled personnel, which means that the supply cannot keep up with the demand. This is a clear indication that as long as you're skilled, there's plenty of opportunities out there available for you. And now we're at number one, DevOps engineer. A DevOps engineer works with developers and the IT staff to oversee code releases. He or she understands the software development lifecycle and has the understanding of various automation tools for developing digital pipelines in continuous integration and continuous delivery. They earn a whopping $144,000 per annum. Now let's have a look at some of the skills required to become a DevOps engineer. Firstly, you'll need a clear understanding of the DevOps lifecycle as well as DevOps tools. You'll need to have a strong understanding of programming languages. You'll need to know about building, coding, testing, integrating and maintaining of a software project and need to have experience working with DevOps tools on cloud platforms such as AWS, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. Now let's have a look at some of the responsibilities of a DevOps engineer. Firstly, you'll need to work with developers as well as the IT team to oversee code releases. You'll need to code and script to ensure there's continuous deployment as well as integration. You'll need to manage the IT infrastructure so that you can support software code in dedicated, multi-tenant or hybrid cloud environments. You'll need to provision resources, you'll need to select the appropriate deployment model and direct the testing protocol to validate releases. And finally, you'll need to monitor the performance of the system after the release is done. Now let's have a look at some of the companies that regularly hire DevOps engineers. You have Sony, CGI, Nvidia, NASA, HP, Lenovo, Amazon and so on. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. I hope this has inspired you to upskill and grow in your career. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.